Coming up next on Jersey Matters, we'll introduce you to a young Atlantic City businessman who is running for governor. And get this, he wants to build another bridge. We will take you inside the Stand Up for Science rally in the state capitol. And a New Jersey business leader wants to get rid of public pensions once and for all. Those stories and a whole lot more because Jersey Matters. Welcome to Jersey Matters. I'm Larry Menti. We continue our series of conversations with those running for governor in New Jersey. Let me introduce you to Hirsch Singh, who is a businessman and engineer who deals with aerospace and defense. The son of immigrants is running for the Republican nomination for governor in New Jersey. Sir, thank you so much for being here. Thank you, Larry. I start off every interview as we talk to a candidate, especially someone that not everybody may know, in just a uh, telling us a little bit about yourself and why you could be or should be governor. So I was born in Atlantic City, and uh, being born in New Jersey is a really important thing. You know, our culture is unique, our style is unique. To protect it, you gotta know it, you gotta be from it. I went to a public school, I think it did a great job, I had amazing teachers. I think that uh, one of the big problems we have right now is our education funding, and I think that that is mired with a lot of the other big problems we have, like our high property taxes. Uh, identifying the main problems is the first and most important thing before you can solve those problems. And so a lot of the people that are running for government right now are in the process, in the political system, in one area or another. And uh, when you're in the system, you know that statement, power corrupts? I think that they've been there for too long. Uh, I'm an engineer and, and a problem solver. And uh, so I think I can bring something that the people really need. So you're running as an outsider. You're sounding a little bit like Donald Trump. Are you a Donald Trump supporter? I think Donald Trump, uh, his message when he ran for president was one of the greatest messages we have heard in a very long time. He took every powerful political elite in the entire country from the Democratic side and the Republican side that have not done good for the American people. And he, he brush them aside. So we have a unique opportunity with Donald Trump. We have the ability to hit the reset button and really get our country to go in the right direction. Uh, his message was wonderful. We need to see follow through. We need to see uh, his message to be actually delivered. I think that if he does that, he's going to be one of the greatest presidents in American history. But if he goes back on you know, some of the things like what we're seeing with the Affordable Care Act and uh, with Syria, I, I really, uh, I'm going to reserve judgment right so you're now. You're disappointed in his first 100 days? Not, he doesn't have 100 yet, but in, in his time in office so far? I think he's done a lot of good but we need him to follow through. His number one issue was the Affordable Care Act, and you can't just have a symbolic victory in Congress. You need to do something that the American people need and American people want, and that is something that is gonna be more cost effective and uh, something that's gonna let people be who they are. So uh, I, I really, uh, uh, I loved his message. Uh, in very hostile environments, I waved his flag. Now it's time for him to deliver what's good for America. Now, you know that most of the Republican candidates, I think I'm right in saying that, certainly Kim Guadagno and Jack Cittarelli, have distanced themselves from Donald Trump because Donald Trump was not popular in this state and has lost some popularity since he took office. You aren't running away from him. You're embracing him. That is, may not be seen as a wise political strategy. Well, I think that anyone who would actually really say it's not wise is someone who's not you know paying attention to the people because it was the silent majority that got him elected not and New uh, Jersey in New Jersey, you had the highest voter turnout in, in history for a presidential election. Taking that into consideration, I think both sides showed up because of, you know, the Democrat and the Republican side. Uh, so I would say that the job was done. He did bring democracy out. And if you lose, I mean, New Jersey has specific issues. But you would, and we will get to those issues. Yeah. And, but, yeah. but you would agree that this is a blue, blue state. It's become a blue state. And that Donald Trump didn't do as well here as he did across the rest of the country. And for you to win, for a Republican to win, you have to be able to reach and get some Democratic voters to win. And oh, if yes. you believe that premise, yes. will they hold that Donald Trump support against you? No, I do not think so. I think that it's all about the message. And my reason for supporting Donald Trump was that he was saying that he would do good for America and that he said that he would try and make sure that, that we undo what all the political insiders have been. The corruption needed to get thrown out. So he did beat them. Now it's up to him to deliver, right? 
He did not give us specifics, he gave us platitudes. Now let's let those platitudes come to fruition and everyone can be happy. But if he changes his message, I will challenge him. I'll be the first one to rally the, the silent majority in this state and beyond and say, you tricked us. But I think right now he is actually gonna deliver. I, I have faith, I have hope. But in this state, did he come here that often? Did he come here to campaign? No. Uh, he was told he couldn't possibly win here. He was campaigning in other states, and he, he did what he did, and he won. So if he had spent more time here, I think he could have won people over because his, his message was America and what's good for America. You're from Atlantic City, where Donald Trump has a history. Was Donald Trump good or bad for Atlantic City? Well, who's in charge of the environment that business is supposed to thrive in? That's government. Oh, you're not gonna answer the question. No, I will answer the question. That it's government that creates the environment that business must thrive in. But every person had their hands in the money jar of Atlantic City. And if you're taking a business's money at the rates that the casinos have been getting, I would say, taken advantage of by the government, then, then that's why you see all these casinos failing. You know, he made a good amount of money before he left. As a businessman, he did take care of his dollars first. But here's the problem. But in doing it's that, he stiffed contractors. In doing that, he put a lot of people out of work. And so, I, and that's why I, the original question was, was he good or bad for Atlantic City? I know he was good for Donald Trump, but was he good for Atlantic City? Well, he gave the, the dream of, of being America's playground more value than by not showing up to have a casino there. And you have to understand that I have a very personal uh, 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 you know, closeness to this matter because right now Atlantic County and you know that area is leading the entire country in foreclosures so it's not just one side you can say that's wrong it's the government's job to help business do their work the amount of money that's been coming through Atlantic City it could have it could have exploded ten times over but that money kept leaving South Jersey going to other programs that have not helped the state and Trenton's job was to make sure no new casinos would be going up in the states around us they failed at their job all right, if, if you're a leader, you need to take care of the things that matter and are how important. Would, how could Trenton stop casinos from going up in the states around us? Isn't that how lobbying works? You lobby the states around you and say, look, let's not do this, let's not let that happen? I don't understand. So if, you're, if you were governor, you think your power would be to be able to stop casinos from going up in the states around us? Actually, the real thing is you make Atlantic City so nice, so good. That infrastructure is great so that people would not want to invest somewhere else because no one would want to go there. But what about North Jersey? Are you for casinos in I'm North Jersey? I am 100% against it. They should not be there. You, you're sound, and, and forgive me for this, but you're sounding more like an Atlantic City candidate than a state candidate. Well, we were only talking about Atlantic City so far. Give yeah, but I mean, you, but, I'll tell you about but more the, things. Well, but but no, why why no casinos in North Jersey? Because it's it's not necessary. We have other things in North Jersey that can be done really well. If we've invested so much money for so many years in Atlantic City, let's not waste money by trying to recreate something somewhere else. Let's let's make what's good even better, and let's bring other new things to North Jersey. We have to talk about pension, we have to talk about yes. school funding, yes. and your idea to put a bridge, another bridge in South Jersey. We continue our conversation with Hirsch Singh when we continue. Welcome back to Jersey Matters, I'm Larry Manti. We continue our conversation now with Hirsch Singh. Republican candidate for governor. Uh, let's talk a little bit about uh, Kim Gudano, about Jack Chitarelli, about your competition. Where do you fit in in that race? So far in the polls, I know you announced late, but you haven't shown up. So uh, if you look at the sampling size the polls are using, there are only a couple hundred people, and we're a state of about eight million plus. When you take that into consideration, there's a sampling statistical uh, you know, amount of in inconsistency. Um, I would say that, you know, which historically only 9% or 10% of people show up in the primary. And I think this year there's a lot of different possibilities. Um, I think that, you know, we are actually going to be doing much better than people expect. When you're throwing up the 10% or the 9% or the, even the 7% that show up in the primary sometime, that allows the parties to control the race. You don't have the party support right now. And, and when you go county to county, it's been kind of split up between Jack Cittarelli and Kim Guadano. Uh, does that, how much does that hurt you? That's so even if you take that into consideration, you have 21 uh, you know, counties in the entire state, and uh, there are, let's say, about 300 people that are considered your insiders in each one of these counties. That's about 6,300 people that are, that are like all on the inside. This is all for headlines, but actually the people that are you know, showing up in the primaries, 330,000. 
330,000. Even if you have all the support of the people on the inside, that means nothing. It's the people. It's not the party line that wins. It's the people. And so as long as your message is getting to the people and they know that you're going to fight for them, and right now no one thinks the Republican Party can win this debate, this governor's race this year, I'm the only one who I feel uh, has been able to really get to the people and let them know that there's a possibility that we can outdo, outclass, out-innovate, and outthink the opponent on the other side. Let's talk about the state pension. How do you fund it? The state pension? Yeah, the state pension. Okay, sorry. I was just trying to be clear. Uh, the state pension, I think, is, is something that we need to understand very, very clearly. We made promises with people that, that paid into a system and decided when they were going to retire. We must pay it in full. We must find new revenue streams. We must take care of the people that trusted us so that we continue to have the trust of the New Jersey citizen. Uh, on the flip side of that, moving forward, we need to you know, really understand that we can't make promises like this to government employees. So you would move to a 401k for those coming into the system now? I don't know if I would necessarily call it a 401k, but I would want something that is more business equivalent. Uh, we don't need government-sponsored Cadillac plans, but if we made that promise in the past, if it was the poor leadership that got those things passed in, the, in, in, in bygone times, we must now honor it because we are America and we are strong and we honor our word. But I think moving forward, we need to shift. Let's go to the school funding formula. Everybody agrees that it's broken, but everybody disagrees. On, many people disagree on how to fix it. Where, where we, how would you like to fix it? The Abbott School District was a theory that uh, Abbott School decision or interpretation by the Supreme Court was something that was, uh, you know, really mandated by that Supreme Court, and it's wrong. And it's really giving our students in this state a second-class education. We are paying premium dollar. We're paying $13.3 billion. And, and what are we getting for it? So uh, how do you fix it? You need to really simply follow the fairness formula. You take the $13.3 billion, you divide it by every student K through 12, and you make sure that every student is getting an equal opportunity regardless of what zip code they come from. And, and quickly, uh, I want to, because it's fascinating to me, you want to build a bridge from Cape May to Delaware? Yes. We have Right now, only one main conduit between New York City and Washington, D.C., and that's Route 95. If you build this bridge, this would be a 17-mile bridge and have to be really, really high in the air because you would have the, the most busy waterway in the world over there with all those ships. So after a really high bridge, we'd have 17 miles of wind turbines in that bridge, so it's also a power plant that would help pay for it. Uh, the Delaware governor, John Carney, would have a say in this, though, right? I mean, and they're having the same financial problems that New Jersey has. Of course, of course. We are collaborators. You know, we are, we are the leaders. Have you talked to him? I've not spoken to him yet. First, I have to win here. Okay, good right? enough. Fair enough. Sir, thank Your you pleasure, so much. Sir. I really appreciate you coming thank in. Thank you, Larry. Her Singh, businessman and engineer who deals with aerospace and defense from Atlantic City, the son of immigrants, running for the Republican nomination for governor in New Jersey.